Anyone else? We'll get you more. Anybody want a water? Uh, one, one more. Speak now. All right. Just one more. Very good. Have a seat. Thank you. We are still on the record in the matter of State of Utah versus McNeil. Mr. McNeil is present. His counsel are both present. The state's attorneys are here. The witness is seated. The jury is seated. You may continue. So you don't recall saying anything to Dr. Fricky about, about the over-medication incident as you've described it here in court today, correct? That's correct. I don't recall. And then the day after the, this so-called over-medication incident on April 5th, there was an appointment with Dr. Thompson, a follow-up appointment, right? You said the day after her... Yeah, so April 6th. On April 6th. Day. Yeah. I don't remember that specific date, but um, I do believe she had two. Well, I know for sure on the 10th she had that, the last follow-up, and then I know she had one in between. You didn't say anything to Dr. Thompson either about the, this over-medication incident either. I don't believe I did because I was giving her her medication. She was no longer over-medicated, so that wasn't an issue. And then... And I asked you that at the preliminary hearing um, as well, right? I don't remember. Um, what page? Um, 814 and 815. Okay. 814. Okay, I'm on 814. And so down on line 20, I asked you, and you never told him that you thought she was over-medicated, and you answered no, because by that time, I was the one giving her the medication, and she wasn't over-medicated. Did, did you ask me this? I think um, this Susan Gustin did. You, you are exactly right. It was Suzanne. Yep. Suzanne, whatever her name is. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, uh, and so then uh, Suzanne said okay, and you said she was fine, she was, she was fine. And then the question was asked, but you didn't, you never mentioned that, that that was a problem, right? And you answered, I don't recall mentioning that. Right? I don't, because she was fine at that time. She was no longer over-medicated. And then Suzanne asked you, okay, did you mention that to anybody else that your mom uh, had been over-medicated? And you answered, I don't think so, correct? Um, on, which line are you referring to? On 8, 5, page 815, uh -huh. uh, line 6. Yeah, you know, I, I don't recall this time me mentioning it to anyone else. And then that's the same thing that you testified to at the preliminary hearing as well, right? That, that you, you don't think you mentioned it to anybody else. This is the preliminary hearing. That's what I'm saying, yeah. You just... Yeah, oh, and that, well, I, I'm just, I'm referring to this, yes. Okay. I don't, I don't remember. I could have maybe mentioned it to a sibling or something, but I, I just don't remember. I mean, I talked to my mom about it.
At the preliminary hearing, you also said that um, uh, every sip of water uh, that, that your mother took, you would have written that in the log as well, correct? Yeah, I was writing that in the in the the log. There's nothing in the in the Zyrtec log that has sips of water. Well, that's because I was doing that in the black book log. And and so the black book log was actually before initially. Well, the, kind of at the same time, I was doing like vitals and food and everything, and then I decided I wanted to combine them all to one log. In your uh, official statement from September of 2007, you don't mention anything in there about uh, a fight between your, your mother and father about Gypsy Willis that you overheard, correct? I don't know. Like I said, this was, these were very short little paragraphs that I was just giving concise little statements. But so, I... So at that time, you didn't think that that was important? Or was that something that, that just came about later in your, in your in it your didn't story. I mean it's something that happened and if I didn't document everything I mean I I left out a lot I mean this wasn't this was me just writing up a few things to give to the police but I and you know and I let me just look here to make sure I didn't say it And only the first, let me see. Only the first, uh, there's five pages that even talk about the death of my mother. The rest of it is other information. But I did talk about, um, oh, yeah, I did mention it here on page four. Yes, on page four. Oh, when she talked about, oh, what she talked about, she was concerned about Gypsy Jillian Willis. Right, yeah, she just talked about that with you, right? That's what she Well, and I didn't include that, but that must have been, that must have been the day of the fight, too, because that's when she said she's not going to let that issue die as well. And that's what I overheard them arguing about. Exactly. And that's what my mom was saying. So in your official statement, you didn't say anything in there about a fight. You just said that she talked to you. But I did right? when, when I was interviewed with the police. You did a couple years later. Oh, I, I don't know if it was a couple years later. Well, well in 2011. So, okay. Sorry, did you have a question? I do. Okay. Sorry, I just I'm kind of rambling a little bit. testified today about um, your mother's bathing habits, correct? Yes. And investigators had asked you about that in the past as well, right? About her bathing habits? Um, I know they have in the past. I don't recall specifically when. You've never ever told anybody until today that it was your mother's habit to, to start the water in the tub and then get in, have you? No, that's not true. Um, I'd emailed Doug Whitney. That's what the prosecution brought up an email from that from a couple. I, I don't remember what day it was, but I'm sure they have a copy of it. Let's let's look at um, the exhibits in tab 17. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. And uh, on there, there's an email 
sometime shortly after April 27, 2011 from you to Jeff Robinson, right? Yes. And, and you indicated that your mother does take a bath. Yes. Every day, right? I said usually every day. Yeah. And then on the next page, you talked about my mom usually took her clothes off in her closet before getting into the bath, mm -hmm. right? She didn't normally leave them on the floor next to the tub, right? No, she'd normally change in her closet. Then you said sometimes she would take her clothes off in her bedroom and would drape them over the couch in her room, right? Yes. So, so in 2011, you didn't talk about what you said here today about this habit of your mother always filling the tub first. I wasn't asked um, at this time. I don't believe I was asked at this time, so it never came up. In, in your um, Zyrtec log, you have uh -huh. a, a notation on day four, 10.45 p.m., uh -huh. that, that you gave your mother a stool softener. Yes, it, it wrote down stool softener times three. You knew she was constipated. My mom, uh, I don't know if I knew she was constipated. You just normally give medications for that when you're taking narcotics. You didn't give this stool softener on day two, did you? You know, sometimes it usually takes a few days before the you kind of the, that that effect kicks in. You didn't give the stool softener on day three, did you? Um, let me just see. It does not look like I did. And you didn't give the stool softener on day five, either, did you? Maybe she didn't need it by then. Fair to say you weren't with your mother all the time when she took baths? Every single time she took yes. a bath? Yeah, I couldn't be. She took them usually every day, right? She took them very often. And so while you may have observed her some of the time, you don't know what her practice was on all the times that you didn't observe her, obviously, right? That's correct. But she did have a routine that you observed when you were a child watching her take baths? Well, over the, I mean, I think I was 22 at that time, so over the 20 years. You testified here today in court that when you spoke with your mother on April 11th that, uh, that she was doing just fine, right? That's correct. That she wasn't reporting being sick or nauseated no. at all? No, she was feeling really good. Turn back to 12C again. Uh -huh. Referring to Dr. Fricky's notes on page two. You see the note where she says she was feeling a little, referring to the day of death, AM of death. She was feeling a little sick and planning to return to bed. Do you recall that, that discussion occurring when, when you and your father were speaking to, to Dr. Fricky on speakerphone? You know, I don't recall the specifics of that. Did you tell Dr. Fricky, no, that's not right, mom was feeling just fine on the day of her death? Um, no, I was just listening in. And I believe this is what my dad was saying. And that's inconsistent with what, what your memory is now? 
as far as how your mom It's was inconsistency feeling. of what my memory was. I mean, it's inconsistent to what my memory was because she was feeling good. I mean, I wouldn't have gone gone home if she wasn't feeling good. You remember speaking at her funeral? Yes. You remember at your at the funeral during your talk talking about how your mother was feeling the, the day of her the morning of her passing? I don't. I think well, I remember certain things, but I don't think I'm allowed to say to say it, so I'm I'll show you the transcript here in just a second. Would you turn to tab 22C? Yes. You recognize this as a transcript of, of your talk at, at your mother's funeral? I don't specifically remember saying this. You see it down towards the bottom. The last time I spoke to my mom, she was happy. She was feeling a little sick. Mm, yeah, I don't remember saying that. Just remember her saying that my dad was being so nice to her, so sweet, as that's highlighted. And I remember, like I said here, that my mom was happy. Okay. In, in reviewing, now that you've had more time to review the talk, does this seem to be an accurate transcript of, of your talk at your mother's funeral? You family? know, I really just don't remember saying that, but um, yeah, so I'd, I think I'd have to listen to it. Okay, I'll, I'll get it for you shortly. Turn to tab 24.
Well, actually, let's just turn to your preliminary hearing testimony you know, on um, page 770. Do I need both of these open at the same time? No, no. Okay, not this one, okay. So at the preliminary hearing, you were asked about uh, when Gypsy moved in, and, and you indicated that it was two to three weeks after your mother passed away. Is that Ye correct? Yes. And that's correct with your memory here today? It was very shortly after my mother died, within a couple of weeks. Back to the, to the day that um, your mother passed away, uh, you, um, you've testified earlier that, that you spoke with her at about 7.45 Las Vegas time, 8.45 Utah time, right? That's correct. And that's the only time you spoke to her that day? Yes. And uh, there, on your phone records, that there, there shows that there was a call at 8.41 what you previously indicated was 7.41 Vegas time, 8.41 mm -hmm. Utah time, mm -hmm. uh, which was a call from you to your mother mm -hmm. that, that was not answered, right? Yeah, but there yeah. was on the phone record, uh-huh. And then she called you back. Yeah, I know I only talked to her one, one time that, that morning. <clears throat> and, and you um, discussed um, speaking with your your mother in your official statement as well, right? Um, I believe I did mention that. And, and in your official statement, uh, you said that, that you had spoke to your mother twice that day, correct? Um, which page would that be on, Mr. Spencer? All right, I lost my place in my notes. Many papers here. I'm sorry, Judge. Okay. Okay. So it's tab 19. And so then tab A. 19A. Mm -hmm. It's paragraph 10. In your official statement, you said that you'd spoke to your mother twice before you began classes, right? Um, yeah, that's what was written here, but I don't remember speaking to her twice. Um, I know the phone records show that there was a one-minute call, and then she called me back, mm -hmm. and it was like a two-minute call. So I don't know if she picked up the phone and said, I'm going to call you right back. I don't remember that. Well, you've, you've previously, though, indicated that that first call was a no answer, right? That, to my recollection, I don't remember my mom answering the first time. That's correct. And, and here in your official statement, uh, which was written in September of 07, uh, you indicated that you had already spoken to her twice. That's what it said here, yes. And then... You and it said she sounded got, fine. Yeah. And then you got a message from your father, right? Uh, yes. And then it says that you tried to call your mom several times the next hour but couldn't reach her. Yes. Right? Your phone records don't uh, indicate that you actually tried to call your mother several times, do they? I don't know. How many times does it show? It shows three calls. The 
So well, because I called, I not only called, I believe, my mom's cell phone, but also called the home phone. Uh, and and since, since you indicate you were concerned, you certainly would have called long enough to, to let your, your answering machine pick up at home, right? I don't even know if we had an answering machine at home. Okay. I don't think we did. And um, I only had a short time in between classes, so... And I really wasn't worried worried about my mom because she was great when I had just previously talked to her. Okay. You um, you also sent um, emails to the investigators in this case in relation to calling your mother, correct? Um, I don't remember the specifics of emails, but I'm sure I I have sent e I mean I've sent numerous emails. Turn over to tab B. To tab B. Okay. See an email dated September 14th of 2008 that the prosecution has provided? Yes. And mm -hmm. right about in the middle of the, of the page, you mm -hmm. write, looking at my schedule that day, April 11, 2007, I know that I called around 10.30 a.m. Utah time and spoke with my mother. That's what you wrote, right? Um, yes. And, and then she said she was feeling fine, right? Yeah, but this, I was getting the time thing confused. Okay, and, and then you write, my first class did not start until 11 Utah time, right? Um, no, my first class actually started at, I believe, eight well, 9 o'clock Utah time. I was, I think I was adding an hour instead of subtracting it. Okay. There happens to be a, a phone call from, from your cell phone records uh, from ni at, at 9.50 Nevada time or 10.50 Utah time that was placed, correct? So it would be 9.50 Nevada time. So that would be in between my second and third lecture, I believe, where I did, I did call home. I, I only spoke with my mom at my apartment that day. That's the only time I ever had a conversation with her. Here in this email, you say you know that you called around 10.30 a.m. and spoke with your mother. And there happens to be a call on your log, on your cell phone log, at 10.50 a.m. Isn't that consistent? Um, I don't know. I'm going to look at the official statement I gave because... I don't think I had my phone records or anything at this time. But I only spoke with my mom once, and that was at my apartment before class started. And I am 100% sure about that. So your statement in your official statement that you'd already talked to her twice that day was wrong? You know, and like I said, maybe that initial call that was only a minute was me calling and her saying, I'll call you right back, something like that. But I don't. I only specifically remember talking to her once, and that was at uh, when I was at home in my Henderson apartment. Okay. And your. And this is wrong because my first class did start. Maybe I was looking at the wrong schedule or something like that. But my first class started, I believe, at eight o'clock. I'd have to go over that, but it was an early. It was an early start. I'd have classes usually starting at 8. Class and I said this is... Sometimes canceled, right? Um, they were, but I mean, I had... And I had friends all around me, too. I mean, I was sitting in class call, making these phone calls right around people. None of which do these three phone calls you referenced show up on your call log. Sorry? Excuse me, the three phone calls that, that you say you made after you got the message from your father. And, you know, at the beginning of this email, I said, this email is full of random memories. Each paragraph is a different memory of thought. I tried to recall all that you asked me, but so I just don't think this was 100% uh, my timing there. But I know for sure when I spoke with my mom for the last time. And that was in my apartment in Henderson. To tab C. This is an email a week later. 
uh -huh. September 21st of 2008. Want to go to page two? You say you called and spoke with your mom before leaving for school around 10.30 a.m. School started at 11 a.m. Utah time. It didn't, though. I mean, I obviously put it down wrong here. This is over a year later. So you put it down wrong in consecutive weeks. Yeah, you know, until, and then I ended up, um, I believe I ordered my uh, phone transcripts. And then when I actually had my transcripts in front of me, I could put the exact times. I was, I was messed up with the Pacific time and, and switching things around. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at, at your phone transcripts, which are in tab D, uh -huh. it shows that you um, placed a call at, 7.41 a.m. for, for one minute, right? Yes, yeah, so that, that would be 8.41 Utah time. Right, and that's the one. That's that the did. last, that's, that's when I talked to my mom. Oh, actually, that, that's the one that you indicated in the past was, was a non-answer, and then there was one at 7.44. Okay, so 7.44 instead of 7.41. Okay. Yeah, so there's the 7.41, which you you've previously mm -hmm. stated was, mm -hmm. was no answer. Mm -hmm. 7.44, you spoke to your mother for two minutes. Yeah. And then at 9.50... Nevada time, 1050 Utah time, there's a call that, that you place for a one minute duration to Utah, or to your home number rather. Yes. Okay. But I didn't, I didn't get a hold of her. She Even didn't answer. Even though in these other emails you expressed your memories that, that you well, know you talked to your mother around 1030. Well, it took a while. I think it was after that. That's when I got all my phone records. And as soon as I got the records, I was able to better document exactly what time because this showed exactly what time in Nevada. And then as soon as I did that, I gave those to the... Words, what you're saying is it took a while for you to put together your story, correct? Uh, no, that's not what I was saying. So you you expressed your memories of what happened and then you got the phone records which were inconsistent with your memories and so you then changed your story oh. to harmonize with the phone records no that's i think i was just getting the times wrong but i i mean i know for a fact this this is when i talked with my mom for the last time And I can I'll get you another question here in a second. Okay. okay. At the preliminary hearing on page seven fifty four. Hold on one second. One And I don't know if this is something the prosecution brings up, but on my well, official I'll statement. Ask question and then okay. answer that. And so turn to the preliminary hearing at, uh, on page 754. Uh -huh. Page 754. And lines 10 through 13. You indicated that uh, you would have listened to your father's message right away during a break? Yes. That's what you said, right? 
during the break, yes. Mm -hmm. And going back to your to your phone records, it shows on, and, and if you need to flip back there, it's uh, tab 19D. 19B or 19D, D. okay. Okay. It shows uh, an incoming call from your father at, at 8, 10 a.m. Nevada time or 9, 10 a.m. Utah time. Yes. For two minutes, right? And you've testified, do you think that was a voicemail? I believe so. That was the voicemail. Like I'd said. Possible that that was actually a connected call with your father that you spoke, to, spoke with him? No. Because okay. after that, uh, uh, at 8, 29 and, and 8, 30, you, you call customer care for, for your phone company, right? Isn't that um, what's in your record? That's what's in the record, yes. So but you, you, you weren't in class then, or, or you at least had plenty of time to listen to your dad's voicemail long before a break in class, right? You know, I don't know. Maybe I'd called it and I was on hold. I, I don't remember calling customer care that day. But that's what shows on your phone records. It shows a customer care, yes. In relation to um, when you got the, the message uh, about your, your, your mother's passing, you, you went to the airport and you testified today that, that you flew home and went directly to the, to the house, right? Yes. And you testified at the preliminary hearing that you went directly to the house because you wanted to go check on the, the medications, yes. right? Yes. And... In your January 5th, 2011 interview, you said okay. something different, right? Um, I don't remember, but let's see. What page? page? Six. Okay. Line 127. Mm -hmm. In January 2011, Chris Anderson picked you up and you, were, you drove directly to the hospital. Um, right? That's, you know, I think uh, that's what I wrote here, but that's not what happened. I drove home first. Well, this isn't what you wrote. This is in response to questions that you were asked by the investigators, right? Um, Yes, this was the investigators asking me. And so when they asked you questions in January 2011, you said you got here with Chris and you went right to the hospital. Uh, that's what I remembered. But then when thinking back, I remember it differently because I went home first. And then I remember my friend Wendy driving me to the hospital. So I forgot, I forgot that detail. So if you turn to um, page and this was, 69 yeah, of that interview, same interview. Uh huh. You talked about Wendy in, in this interview as well, so you didn't forget that detail, right? Okay. Page 1482. Mm-hmm. You said. <laughs> I know that Chris drove me. I went to the hospital, um, and then my other friend, who I called Wendy, I called her when I was driving home from Salt Lake City, and she rushed to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And she was getting to the hospital at the same time I was getting there. So I think Chris dropped me off at the hospital, and then Wendy met me, and we walked in at the same time and found out that my mom wasn't there. And so then Wendy took you home. So you did talk about Wendy. Okay. At the interview, right? Um, yes. And, and at the interview, even when you remember talking about Wendy, you went to the 
hospital to check on your mom, and mm -hmm. then Wendy took you home, right? Yeah, I but guess. Your testimony was... here today that you went straight home, that, that's not accurate, is it? To what, to what I remember, I remember going home first, and then I remember going to the hospital and just turning right around because right as I walked in the hospital doors, they said the medical examiner had already taken me, so the hospital wasn't a big event for me. Well, that clearly wasn't what you remembered on January 5th of 2000. I guess I was, yeah, I, I don't, um, I guess what I put here is that I went to the hospital first and then went home, but has, as I recall it, I went home first. Oh, now. That's what I recall, yeah. And maybe that's something we can ask Chris about um, if he remembers dropping me off at the hospital or at home first. And when you uh, got home, whichever time it was, uh, you went in to, to your parents' bedroom and, and your dad was in there and the lights were off, right? Um, I, I, I did go into my parents' bedroom. I don't remember it this time if the lights were off or not, but that could have definitely been the case. In uh, January of 2011, you remember that the lights were off and he was sitting on the couch looking down, right? January 5th, you mean? January 5th, 2011, I okay. mean, yes. Thank Which you. page? Um, page 63. Okay. He was just on the couch looking down. Line 1355, his mind was somewhere else. Right? That's what Doug Whitney said, his mind was somewhere else. I didn't say that. You said, yeah, you, you agreed with him. I had said he wasn't crying. He was just looking, not rigid, but, and then Doug Whitney said his mind was somewhere else. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. And then you said, and he was going very slowly. Right? Um, yes. And then you've talked today about um, uh, a time when your dad explained to you what happened to your mother, right? I talked today about that, that's mm -hmm. correct. And, and today you said that, that he talked to you about that as a result of your request, right? Yes, he did, and it, it happened twice. And you asked him both times, right? Um, I know at least one of the times I asked, show me how you found her. And then I don't, I don't know if the other time he was just telling Rachel kind of the same thing. Okay. Well, still on page 63, in your interview on January 2011, uh, you don't discuss that it happened twice. You say on line 1364, it was later on that evening when Rachel came home that I asked my dad what happened. You know, show me how you found my mom. Mm -hmm. That's what you said in January of 2011, right? Um, yeah, at least give me a minute so I can read this. Yeah, I did. I was talking about uh, when later on that evening, when he showed me for the second time with Rachel, which was the same that. time. I mean, he that. said he showed the same exact same thing. Yeah, you don't say that there were two times in, in this January 2011 interview, right? No, but I believe I said it in other earlier interviews. Okay. 
what you say here in January 2011. You say, it was later on that evening when Rachel came home that I asked my dad what happened. That's what you say then, right? Line 1364 and 1365. I think in earlier, earlier interviews. I'm just asking you about this interview. And this one specifically, I said, it was later on in the evening that I asked my dad what happened. That's correct. Yeah, later on that evening when Rachel came home that I asked my dad what had happened, you know, mm -hmm. show me how you found my mom, right? That's correct. That's what you said. And then you go on to explain that, that it was not until 6 or 7 that Rachel got home, right? That's correct. Because you know it was dark. Your Honor, I've, I've probably got another... 30, 40 minutes. Would you like, are you at a place where it's a good time to break? Yeah. I okay. Think so. Let's I, continue in the I morning the then. Probably got commitments. We'll now be in recess for the evening. During our recess, uh, remember it's your duty not to discuss any subject of the trial with each other or with anyone else. It's your duty not to form or express an opinion on the case until it's finally submitted to you for deliberation. Avoid television, radio, or internet news coverage of the trial. Do no research on your own using a computer or anything else. Uh, we'll commence back here tomorrow morning, 8.30. Uh, thank you so much for being on time each day. Uh, we work hard to get moving. Invariably, there are some housekeeping matters that we try to deal with. Uh, in light of that, could we, could we start at 9 o'clock? Because tomorrow morning, I think we have to deal with a couple of matters raised earlier this morning. That's fine, Your Honor. Is that fair? Why don't we begin at 9 o'clock? Thanks so much. Please be seated. You may step down. Thank you. In the morning, uh, I don't know what that interference is. Uh, in the morning, will you have the information that you need in relation to the inmates that you discussed earlier? Information and, with respect to what well, yeah, the specifics of it. Right now, I just have some generalized expression of, of concern on the part of inmates, and I think in order to apply the rule, I need to have specific information as to each inmate and make factual findings. I will. So, uh, I have an email from uh, Jeff Robinson, the case officer. He would be prepared to give specifics. Okay. Um, through but, me or, or even to the court, we can make a proffer. Can you... Uh, provide that email to the defense yes. so that they're prepared. I just, as I understand the presumption, I, there has to be a compelling reason to, to make limitations on the, the electronic media coverage of the trial. And so I need details about that. And we did have some of those specifics with inmates one and two, but right now I don't have enough on three and four. So if there, if there are those facts, I'd like to see them. And just for the court, there's there's four total. Okay. One is in a, a separate Texas prison. Three are together in another prison. And it's the three, it's two of the three that we're talking about. And I think that we could provide some specifics. Very good. I'll need that. Hi, uh, anything else this evening? I was just going to add, uh, I know Dr. Gray, tomorrow's his, his day that he's available. He's not available Friday. I had indicated that we would try and get him up first. I obviously wouldn't interrupt Mr. Spencer's cross on Ms. Summers, but I wonder if the court might be willing, depending on how long the cross goes, to interrupt before I, I have an opportunity to redirect Ms. Summers that we could put up Dr. Gray. How long do you think you'll be with him? He'll probably be pretty significant, so I'm going to see what I can do if he's okay with a delay. Okay. But he'll be up there. Is this the kind of witness that would take the bulk of the day, or...? Dr. Gray or not? I don't think he'll take up the entire day, but he, could, shorter than Alexis, I think. he could take up much of the morning, though. 
Okay. And you think you have about 30 minutes, 30 I, to... I think about 30. Um, I'll, I'll work on honing that. Okay. I'll have some redirect, probably not extensive, though. Okay. But we may be okay if we get going at 9, finish with Ms. Summers by maybe 10, if you've got... I really think we, we, we can do that. I, I, I'll... I know there were some, some areas I was a little slow on. I apologize for that. I'll, I'll make sure that I'm quick. Well, there's a lot to, a lot to cover. So, uh, well, you know, well, and that gives you two hours before lunch with Dr. Gray. We'll, so. we'll be able to get his testimony, and that's fine. Okay. Who do you anticipate uh, calling tomorrow? Uh, Your Honor, can I make a record with your clerk after? I don't have the Not sure. Yeah, if you could just get a list, that would be great. Okay. Anything else today? That's all. Good. Thank you for your work. Courts in recess. All